How are my Ram super fans doing? Week one is finally in the books and we got a lot of questions answered, so let's get right into it. Just right off the top, the first thing that I recognized was how beautiful those Rams jerseys look. Those Rams jerseys look better in the game than they did on those Instagram posts. As much as a lot of Rams fans hated that logo, you gotta take your hat off for how the front office handled these jerseys. Man, they are a work of art. I really wish the one that I ordered about two or three months ago would actually arrive sometime. I'm still waiting on it. Maybe I'll receive it one day. Uh, speaking of jerseys, it's going to take me a long time to get used to single digit numbers on uh, some of these DBs, linebackers wearing uh, single digit numbers, running backs wearing single digit numbers. Uh, call me old fashioned. Uh, I'm not saying I don't like it, but it's going to take me a lot of getting used to. But enough of that. Let's talk about the game. So the Rams won 34 to 14 and the big story after the game was quarterback Matthew Stafford being just as good if not better than advertised. Yes, guys, we waited all this long time, we bigged this man up and he did nothing but prove us right. Stafford went 20 for 26 with 321 yards, three touchdowns and zero turnovers. He damn near had a perfect game. I don't know about you guys, but I'll probably remember my reaction forever. And just Matthew Stafford's third play as a Ram, going deep 67 yards to Van Jefferson. It was a work of art. It was amazing. I didn't expect it to happen that quickly. Give it up to Van Jefferson for hitting the ground, bouncing right back up, and making a, a play for the end zone. Then in the second half, we had that 56-yard bomb to Cooper Cup. And I know it was blown coverage. And a lot of people don't like to give much credit to blown coverage. But it still takes a lot. It still takes that quarterback to find that blown coverage. It also takes that quarterback to deliver a beautiful pass. And the O-line still has to hold up. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm still giving Stafford and the rest of that offense a lot of credit for that blown coverage. Now I'm going to give you a stat that when I heard it, boom, my mind was blown. Matthew Stafford played 165 games for Detroit. And his career high passer rating was 148.6. That's out of 165 games. In just one game in LA, Stafford has a passer rating of 156.1. That's crazy. Also, his 12.35 yards per attempt was a career high. His 14.65 adjusted yards per attempt was a career high. And Stafford's 26 attempts to get 20 completions was also the fewest number of throws he needed to complete at least 20 passes. We said this all off season. Matthew Stafford is a good player on a horrible team, but he will now be a great player on a great team. It was the Detroit Lions, guys. We said it, we said it. People didn't believe us. Oh, we want to see it before we crown the Rams the champions. Oh, we want to see it before we just crown the LA Rams as the next offensive powerhouse. Guys, you seen it. You've seen it. And this was only our first game. This is a team that never played together before. This is a, a quarterback who's never played meaningful snaps with this offense. This is a quarterback who didn't play any preseason games whatsoever. And he comes out there with a brand new team and plays perfect. Perfect. I'm not saying you guys should crown Matthew Stafford already as the best quarterback in the NFL. I'm not saying you guys should make him the NFL MVP after one game against the Chicago Bears. I'm not even saying he should be in the same category as Patrick Mahomes and uh, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers just yet, but please just give him a little credit because a lot of people were trashing him, saying he's never won a playoff game before, he never did anything, blah, 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 blah. It was the Detroit Lions, guys. This is the Los Angeles Rams, and we're going to get a Matthew Stafford that you guys have never seen before. Chris Collinsworth said something that really stood out to me during this game. He says Sean McVay needed a partner instead of a student, referring to his relationship with Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford. And he couldn't have worded that more perfect. You could see how nice our offense flow with Stafford, how more explosive our play calling is. You can even see how calm Matthew Stafford was and how smart his playmaking decision was. Just look at that touchdown pass to Robert Woods. Woods wasn't his first option. He wanted to go to the right side of the field. It just wasn't open. And with no hesitation, he steps up in the pocket, goes through his progression, finds an open Robert Woods, and throws a perfect pass that only Woods can catch. 
and boy did he catch it what a catch by robert woods amazing footwork please round of applause for woods if this is how our offense is gonna look all season then we are in for a special year a uh, cooper cup looked to be uh stafford's favorite target uh 10 targets seven catches 108 yards and a touchdown very 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 close to being two touchdowns but uh just stopped short of the goal line on one of them and even though i think cup was definitely stafford's favorite target i think he did a great job of distributing the ball throughout the offense uh hitting six different receivers on the day hey guys and right before we get into how the offense looked outside of matthew stafford if you guys could please just uh hit that like button drop a comment let me know what you guys think about the game also if you could follow me over on instagram and i just created a twitter account guys ram super fan please follow me on twitter i have no followers right now over on twitter i was live tweeting during the game please show me some love on that all right now back to the offense the running game now the running game was all daryl henderson no sony michelle sony michelle got one carry henderson had pretty much the whole workload and did pretty much nothing with it he finished the game with 70 yards and a touchdown Pretty good stats, but those stats are very deceiving. He did nothing through three quarters. I will give it to him. When we needed to give him the ball to ice the game, he ran pretty good. And uh, I wouldn't call it garbage points because we really needed him in that situation to kind of kill the clock. But uh, he did nothing until the very end. The very end. Uh, it was really frustrating to see. Hopefully as the season progresses, uh, you know, he'll get... A little more comfortable taking the bulk of the carries. Uh, that offensive line will gel a little more. Maybe opening up some bigger holes for him. I'm not sure what the issue was today. Uh, Chicago Bears defensive line is not a bad defensive line. So, you know, you got to give them some credit as well. They really held it down and, and, and stopped the run. Now, speaking of the Rams offensive line, as far as pass protection goes, they looked amazing all game long. Stafford didn't get touched. Stafford didn't get touched until six and a half minutes left in the first half. And that was more of a coverage sack. Nobody was open and he kind of just held the ball too long. I really wouldn't blame the offensive line for that. And that was the only sack they had all game. And outside of that, I don't really recall much pressure outside of that either. If anybody could find Matthew Stafford's game worn jersey against the Bears, I guarantee you that jersey's still white. Now let's talk special teams. I want to give a big round of applause for Matt Gay hitting all four of his extra points, along with a 22-yard field goal and a 53-yard field goal. He was perfect on the day. There was a few times during the preseason where Matt Gay struggled, and it got me a little nervous. So it was good just to see that we do have a consistent kicker, and hopefully he remains that way for the rest of the year. Now, I am, like a lot of people, keeping a really close eye on Johnny Hecker. Johnny Hecker was once considered the, the best punter in the NFL. And uh, last year, he had a down year. Then he had some punting competition in training camp. Uh, he edged them out, kept his starting job. Against the Chicago Bears, he had one punt for 50 yards. Nothing to really write home about, but it wasn't bad either. Another thing that I noticed about our special teams was Cooper Cup was our punt returner. He actually didn't get the opportunity to return any kicks. Uh, just a few fair catches in there. Me personally, I don't really like the idea of Cup back there returning kicks. Uh, just because he's our starting receiver uh can you just picture him returning a punt for 50 yards uh getting a big hit and then having to turn around and jump right back into the game i always like my punt and kick returners to not play on offense um or at least not start on offense but you know that's just me what do i know <laughs> another thing we didn't see too too at well out there you know we have this first year receiver we spent a really high draft pick on super speedy you know we have a lot of good wide receivers so we don't have to throw him in on offense right away but i was really expecting him to get the punt and kick returner job i was a little disappointed not to see him out there now let's talk defense the first thing i noticed was jalen ramsey playing a lot in the slot while darius williams and david long jr played on the outside now david long jr did eventually get hurt in this game i'm not sure of the severity rookie robert rochelle came in to take his spot and played pretty good i mean the entire secondary played pretty good all game. Andy Dalton did a great job of getting the ball out of his hands super fast, not allowing our pass rush to get to him. Now, the Bengals ended up with 188 passing yards on the day. There was no deep threat whatsoever. The Bears basically ran on us and threw little five-yard passes here and there on us all day. And yet our defense would bend, but it wouldn't break. 
getting a fumble recovery, an interception, and stopping the Bears on all four fourth down conversions. Now we have to do something about this running defense. Uh, Chris Collinsworth stated during the game that the Rams were kind of playing defense looking to allow the run. Kind of playing in a way where it's like, hey, you're not going to be able to pass on us. We'll let you get some yards. We, we, we want you to run the ball. We don't want you to pass on us. Uh, they did this by not playing many people in the box. A lot of the linebackers were sagging out of the box. Uh, corners, we, two deep safeties the whole game. We were basically playing defense saying, hey, if you want to win, you're going to have to run for 400 yards on us. And that's just not going to happen. Uh, running back David Montgomery finished with 108 yards rushing on 6.8 yards per carry. Luckily, they had to abandon the run in the fourth quarter. Now, let's talk about concerns. Now, the only concern I have is the Rams rushing defense. This is a below average offensive line and the offensive line just got worse as the game went on due to a few injuries. But yet David Montgomery still averaged 6.8 yards per carry. Now what's gonna happen when we play one of these elite offenses with an elite rushing attack? Now our offense put up points on six of seven possessions. And if the Rams didn't lose the time of possession by only 11 minutes, we could have got another possession or two, but we didn't. And it's all due to our inability to stop the run against the Bears. So like I was saying, as far as our run defense is concerned, I don't know if this was uh, just our defensive play calling. Our defensive coordinator saying, hey, look, guys, we're going to give up the run, but we won't let them pass the ball at all. And that's how we're going to win the game. Or is it just due to, you know, our linebackers and our defensive line not having a good day? I know Michael Brockers wasn't the best at getting after the quarterback, but he was really good in stopping the run. Maybe we shouldn't have let him go. Uh, maybe it's too early to know. I'm definitely going to keep my eye on this Rams running defense uh, going forward. Uh, next week against the Colts, it does not get any easier. Now, guys. I love to finish on a positive, so let's talk positives. The Rams offense is rolling, and I only expect them to get better the more they play together. Our offensive line dominated in pass protection all game long. I do think they need to be a little better at opening up holes in our running game early on, but I'm not really worried about it just yet. Now we had seven drives, not including the two drives that ended in kneels at the end of the half and at the end of the game. Out of those seven drives, we put up points on six possessions. We only punted the ball once all game. We ended up getting four touchdowns, two field goals. Honestly, guys, we really can't ask for much better than that. And like I said in the Rams and Bears preview video, I really expected us to start out slow because this is a team that hasn't played together with a new quarterback. We didn't play in preseason together. This is honestly our first outing. And honestly, we played a lot better in the second half on offense than we did in the first half even though in the first half we were playing pretty damn good. I still expect us to get even better than this. As the games go by, as the weeks go by, our offense is gonna gel and it should look a lot better than it's already looked. And that is very scary. If we could get our running game to be half of what our passing game is, the rest of the NFL should be very worried. Man oh man, ain't nothing better than starting off the NFL season one and oh. Now we're off to Indianapolis and be on the lookout for my Rams versus Colts previews and predictions video.